Surprises come in lots of costumes, but never was I more surprised than the first time I found myself fly fishing for carp. Dave Whitlock had made wild claims for this proverbial trash fish and proved them to my satisfaction. So now, much later, I'm driving a thousand miles to Mad River Outfitters in Columbus, Ohio to carp fish with Brian Fleischig. Brian just happens to be a buddy of Dave Whitlock. Could this carp thing be a conspiracy? Who's this Flip guy on the poster on Brian's door? Books by Flip, too. I'd better look into this. I figured I'd find Brian holed up in the back tying mulberry flies. Hey, That's hey, just man. one of the countless well, weird uh, things about fly fishing for carp. Matching the hatch means imitating fruit. What are you using to tie those things with? Geez, Flip, it's nothing but just loops of chenille. Tie dog on. Three strands of chenille and just loop them up the hook. You got your perfect berry and a little zap a gap on the underside. And As usual, on a fishing deal. trip, I lost track of time. But it was somewhere around the 4th of July when we launched on a quarry lake west of Columbus. That's also when the mulberries turn ripe and purple and the carp lie underneath waiting for them to fall off like dogs looking for scraps. But I soon learned these carp are a whole lot pickier than any canines. And for that matter, pickier than most trout. Uh, there is a carp there. Uh, are those bass? No. Never would I have dreamed that one day I'd be brushing off bass and casting yep, yep, to carp yep, instead. Yep. OK, he's, he's thinking about it. Oh, come on. All right. Walk him on the head. Plop it down again. OK. All right, he's, he's going shallow. He's going shallow. That's where we want him. All right, good. Oh, bluegill got it. Bluegill took it out of his path. I got cheated on that one. Yeah, if the bluegill get it first, it's, uh, for whatever reason, the carp don't think about it. It is so hard hard for me to actually cast and try to hit a fish with the lure. Oh, bonk him. That is so contrary to everything I've taught myself since I started fishing. Oh, you want to knock the senses out of him. So it takes a totally new presentation, new to me anyway, to fool these carp. They care less about the look of the fly and more about the sound of it plopping in the water on it. and the way it sinks. He's on it. Got it. All right. Oh, sorry. I couldn't tell where. Not your fault. I just couldn't tell. You know, Flip, you've got to see their mouth open, and you've got to time it. It's, it's really so rhythmic. You have to time it just right. And you see the white of their mouth open, and then, uh, and then you see it close, and then that's the time to tighten up. And if you're just a split second too early, the way their mouth is, you, you don't get it. There he comes over here. See him coming up? Yeah, I got him. Hit him. Do it again. Oh, do it now. He's on it. He ate it. Perfect. That was so fun. Did you see him rush the line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, it's amazing how they respond to that sound. He's got to hear it hit. Boy, you are so right about that. My whole training is to make the fish unaware of the presentation. And this darn thing, you've got to make him aware of the presentation, or he's just not going to get in the game, is he? Yeah, it's it's a tough thing to get used to. They've got to hear it hit. You know, you're you're, you're using a, another sense. You're using a sense of hearing, and we're just not used to that. You never know. These guys give these little lunges. Mm -hmm. They're a lot different here than 
stream or the Great Lakes, they don't they don't run out. They oh. don't take you into your backing. This is a down deal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very unique uh, situation. My buddy Brian Fleischig claims like this is you. the fly fishing of the future, wrestling with carp. He thinks the unthinkable, and he just might be right. Carp fishing is completely unpretentious, like fishing for panfish, and yet it takes all the finesse of angling for trout and bonefish. When, if I can get it out. When they're going for the berries, they don't mess around. They're beautiful fish, actually. They got pretty color to them. Whitlock says a cross between a cutthroat, bonefish, redfish, and a stainless steel fish. Stainless steel fish. Yep. Dave's right. A carp is a conglomerate, three or four different kinds of fish from the time you spot it till the time you turn it loose, which you do unless you're going to eat it. All right. I'm really impressed with the way he just ripped over to that fly <laughs> like it great? was a lizard or something. And well, they, it. they hear it hit the water and they just charge it. You huh. know? They don't even think about what it looks like at that point when they're keyed in. Fast as they strike, there's a fine line between spooking the fish and getting their attention with the dropping fly. It took me a day to get the hang of it, even with Brian's coaching. And Brian had to learn it once, too. When did you first start fly fishing for carp? Was it, did you start on your own, or did Dave get you started on this? No, nah, Flip, I would actually say that uh, Jim Andrix, who uh, started working at the shop, about eight, nine years ago, who's been a, a pretty big influence on my warm water career. I, I would say Jim got me into it first. He's been carp fishing for years and years. Fly fishing? Yeah, absolutely. Fly fishing for him. Uh, he loves smallmouth bass fishing, but when that wasn't happening, he started chasing carp around. And Heck, he had a full selection of flies that he had designed for carp uh, 15, 20, 25 years ago. I'll be darned, because I, I never heard of it at all until Dave Whitlock started talking to me mm -hmm. about doing it in the Great Lakes. Sure. And foolishly, I just believed that that was the only place that it happened and the only place that people did it. And I was shocked when you started telling me about this mulberry thing. Oh, yeah. Often, the trick was to draw them out from the bank with a cast or two, then drop the fly close to the fish without spooking it. Now we'd see if the first carp I caught was only a fluke. Oop. Lines right on top of him. Oh, I was looking at the roll. Although he, he's turning, Flip. He's turning. Leave him. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it. He, although, if you get it out without spooking him, he might plop one in front of his nose. Mm, maybe. He's thinking. Watch his mouth. Yeah. Okay, he's sticking his nose out. Uh, on it. Excellent. Boy, there's a load of them in there. Yep, yep, they, they got berries, too. Now he's going to fight pretty much like a tuna. Pretty much like a tuna? He's just going to go down and down and down. No, no. He's going to have to come up and up and up. There you go. <laughs> there will be no tuna tactics here. Those are tactics that I know. See, he probably thinks... I'm some flatlander that's unaware of these tactics. <laughs> Mulberry season isn't the whole story of fly fishing for carp, but it's one lively chapter. Do carp fight harder when they're bursting with berries? All I know is this one's an armful with a five-weight fly rod. Right. Mulberry trees grow naturally in Asia where carp come Talk from, right so it's a line. sort of ethnic food for the species like polar bears in the Arctic feeding on Excellent seals. Toast. You know what? I'd like to see you catch one. Fair enough. Get your stick ready. So Brian scans the mulberry shadows for fish while I get busy trying to look like a carp guide. Brian and I are kindred spirits. A year ago, he introduced me to some amazing bass ponds in the dead center of Ohio's summer heat. I lost the bass so big, I thought I was back home in Florida. And next year, Brian and I are headed to Patagonia for trout. But none of that is more exciting or exotic than matching the mulberry hatch for hefty carp. Hold the grip. I got it. And try to keep him in the water. Yep. I'll grab a camera. 
Just elevate him just a little bit and I'll get it. Elevate him a little bit more. Hold on a second. What happened? And the boga came off. Did you lose the boga? No, nope, no, nope, here it is. It, fl it flipped right into the boat. Well, the only picture I could get is a picture of you disgusted yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, this, here we go. Here, let me get that. <laughs> I'll keep that picture. There's more. I learned a terrific lesson just then on that deal. No matter how many times you explain something to somebody, until they actually see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I saw you work that fish, I, I learned a lot on that deal. I Good. own it now. Good. I can do it. Of course, a claim like that is the cue for a carp to come along and dispute it. A carp and all his cohorts. Let's, let's go back here and check out the bait. Here's a few ripe ones flipped down close. But they're not, they're not nearly ready. Yeah, you know, Brian, this is funny, but this is not exactly the same mulberry that I'm familiar with seeing. It looks like the same fruit almost, but really, yeah, the tree is quite a bit different, a much bigger, more elongated leaf that we call a mulberry. But I'll tell you, those flies are a pretty darn good imitation of those things. Yeah. Uh, are these things edible? Uh... Not completely right, but try it. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. You sure? <laughs> Let's go fishing. Come on, take me fishing. Enough of this. There he comes over here. Oh, he's he's shallow though. You see him flip? See him coming yeah, up? Got him. Yep. Hit him, drop him. He's yours. Perfect. That was cool. Took the right approach, right timing. Oh, you should have never showed me these tricks. I'm a carpologist now. <laughs> it's just a hacker before. We got you all carped up now. Flip, this one's pretty big for his size. That's about as big as a carp that size is going to get. Yeah, you're probably right. We're about to get carped. <laughs> it wasn't easy to tear me away from the pagan altars of bass and trout. But Brian and Dave Whitlock have carp. made me a convert to carp. <laughs> what comes next? <laughs> Suckers and mudfish? He's a beauty. Want to give him a kiss? Yeah, I'll kiss the next one. Okay. But I'll tell you what, I sure appreciate the day and all the instruction on, on how to deal with these guys. It's a science, isn't it? I mean, the mulberry fishing, it takes you, you know, Whitlock said it when he was out here, you got to get tuned in, you got to get dialed in on exactly what they're looking for, and you did that. So. Thanks, Gary. You bet. Carp on fly, the way Brian does it, is the next big thing. It's sight fishing. It's selective feeders. Trade the mangroves for the mulberries, and you've got a bonefish flat in your own backyard. It helps out a lot. Okay, here we go. Hey you! If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.